Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. We are here for your viewing pleasure on this fine but very cold Friday night. Um, and don't forget dark. It's dark, yeah. It, and it's not fine either. It's wet and horrible out there. So I was lying. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, uh, Iman. Good evening, Joker. How are you pair doing tonight? Not too bad, sir. not too bad. Not, not too, too bad, bad, mate. Not too bad. How are you? I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, Good. Hopefully the throat's going to hold up tonight. Um, I have a can. Looking forward to hopefully getting this book done. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Um, right, we we have some people in chat. We have... Oh, Slan was in chat. He's popped out again. He has to run off. But thank you for the like, Slan. Hello, Slan. Hello, Snufflegrunt. Nice to have you. Uh, yeah, Snufflegrunt's arrived. He was on our uh, Dune 2 stream last night. Uh, Palmetto's there and Halakar. Palmetto and Halakar. Yeah. Yeah. Good so, evening. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't normally start the stream at 9.40, so it's either it's either half nine or 9.45, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a uh, mellow to see if uh, more people uh, are linked to a modernization of D2 on Discord. <laughs> uh, oh, Dune 2. Because yeah, when, when people say D two to me, I think of the AD and D module, um, descent into the depths of the earth, the shrine of the Kuatoa, and uh, that's uh, that's D two <laughs> to me because because I think in I'm a nerd. I think in AD and D module codes. Hello, mm -hmm. Daniel. How are you doing? Are you awake tonight, Daniel? Are you awake? Well, you have you had your nap? Have you? Oh, hey, Dan had. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, uh, well, he must be awake. And uh, how, is, uh, how is how is Kelsey? Or are you are you cosplaying today, Dan? No, I don't know. I don't know. For now, oh bless you. For now, for now, for now. For now. <laughs> and it, there we go. There we go. Yes. <laughs> right. We we now have seven people in chat, so people are filtering in, which is which is rather nice. Um, what have you two been up to? What have you two been up to? Not a lot. Um, my new episode, a new episode of Alone in the Dark went up uh, a couple of hours ago, but uh, a few hours before that, first episode of season one of Killing the Justice League The Journey to Save the Joker. Well, you've got two videos out today. I might need to lie down after this. This is the third one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I put out a few videos on Tuesday. I was I was quite productive on Tuesday. Mm. Right. Anyway, yeah, not done much today, mate. It's Good Friday. Just chilling out. Did a bit of shopping. Is it a Good Friday? Well, it's not right Friday. <laughs> Yeah, it's meant to be a bank holiday here in Britain. And uh, guess which idiot had to had to work it. I didn't just have to work. Mm. I had a very busy day in the shop, and I had to train a new member of staff. So, not trusting. Oh, he's not cooking, so he's not Kelsey today. No, no. Um, <clears throat> so I was. I've been. I've been a, a good boss today. Right, did, I hope books. I hope you get paid extra for working on a bank holiday. No, I work in retail. What? Pay, pay normal. It's, it's just a, just a normal day, and I'm working Sunday as well. And I'm not Stick working on. Monday. My colleagues go on Monday, so I've got this. Well, at least you get one day. Yeah, but I get that day every week. Monday and Tuesday. Oh, that's true, Monday, yeah, yeah. Oh well. Oh, well, hello, Straw Piglet. It's Mare Friday. Yeah, it is Mare Friday. Good way to describe it. Right. We are playing this. We are playing this. Fire on the water. Not to be confused with smoke on the water. And um, there it is. I have to mention it. Every, every time. Week. Every time. Yeah, I know. I'm predictable. Unpredictable. Right, okay. We were at area 10 in this. 
but I'm quite a way into the book. Oh, Daniel is yes, smoke on the water. Yes. Da, 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 da. Daniel, I'll add you to the stream as soon as your devices have connected. Because um at the moment it's saying your devices are not, not connected. Ah, there we go. There we go. Good evening, Daniel. How are you? Hey Dan. Hey Dan. Hey, Dan. Are you properly awake tonight? Are you? No. Boris, I uh, spoke on the water. All I have to say is dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Absolutely. I've, I've, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we all should do it, but no, that would scare <laughs> everybody off. No, I think we'd do it out of sync. <laughs> yes. yes. It, would be terribly, it would be terribly out of sync. Right. As you can see, I have my little. A dice rolling tray open on Albert Rodeo. Um, and I'm gonna start by reading rereading 10. Hello, Keith. Nice chatting with you earlier, mate. You've made really good uh, progress on Bloodborne. Yeah, he's jealous. Apparently, you are better at Bloodborne than he is. Um <laughs> And if he's really nice to you about it, it's it, it, it's fake. He's, he's he's actually really really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I, I appreciate skill wherever it is in any way, shape, or form. And especially when I'm good at something and someone else is better, I'm like, damn, he must be good. I'm the first to admit when it comes to uh, any sort of three D running around of open world type. Um, video game i'm bloody awful <laughs> i'm absolute <ugh. laughs> anyway oh, i have a guitar in the corner of my room too i've got a, a drum kit just over there it's, it's my son's i can just about go tap 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 oh tap, we should tap, definitely tap. jam <laughs> <laughs> i can keep that rhythm going for about 10 seconds and then it goes wrong so that's how good i am at drumming I won't I'm tell you guys what are in the corners of my room. Um, Guns, ammunition. Uh, pretty much, think, yeah. <laughs> and empty Jack Daniels bottles. One. Oh, only one? Okay. Yeah, first person games. My friend has only just started. Although, what? I am going through um, old dungeon magazines right now. Is anybody going to run an early session tomorrow morning? I I believe it's Gene's session, but uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to I ask think, him when he uh, if, if he pops in tonight. Yeah, if he I know pops he's, in, let's mm. ask because I'm trying to find something in case just because I don't have the kids tomorrow. I'm trying to find something for like first through third level characters. Halakar wants Halakar says you're not going to run the little one he sent you. I need to print it out, and oh. I'm out of ink for my printer. It's actually cheaper to go buy a new printer than it is to go buy ink. Yeah, yeah. I just That's haven't been to the Walmart to buy ink. That's what happens when you have a shit printer. The ink costs well, more than the printer itself. Yeah. All printers are shit, in my opinion, but anyhow. Yeah, a lot, most of them are. Most of them are. <laughs> right. Um, okay, I better start reading, don't I? Because we are nearly 10 minutes into the stream. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. <laughs> so, we are just about to leave the city on a, uh, a journey to Port Bax. Um, and we've, port, we've bought a ticket. You pocket the ticket. Record this as a special item on your action chart. And the man escorts you to a coach that is waiting near the east gate of the seaport. It is empty and you take a seat near one of its circular windows. The seat is comfortable, which is a very good thing as a journey to Port Bax will take seven days. Stowing your equipment beneath the seat, you settle back in comfort and doze off. When you awake, you are no longer alone. You have been joined by five other passengers and the journey to Duranor has already got underway. Roll it. We're going to roll a D10 now. Here 
here we go let's let's yeah, get yeah this, random uh, encounter <laughs> that take uh four to six takes us to 195 You have been travelling for nearly two hours when the driver shouts out, Toll bridge ahead, one crown apiece. Despite the pouring rain, you put your head out of the window and you're able to make out a wooden bridge spanning a swollen river and a log cabin in the distance. The driver halts the coach at the log cabin and a strange creature appears in its doorway. It is a Zal, a small subspecies of Gayak, held to be relatively harmless and meek. They have been natives of the wildlands since the age of the Black Moon, when thousands of their kind migrated from the Durncrag Mountains to avoid the tyranny of Vashna, the mightiest of the Dark Lords. The Zal demands one gold crown from each passenger before the coach will be allowed to cross the bridge. The other passengers each place one crown upon a small plate and hand it to you. If you have enough gold to pay the toll, you do so and continue on your journey. So it's not giving us a choice not to pay unless we've got no money. We have four gold crowns. We now have three. We need to get some more cash. <laughs> During the course of the afternoon's journey, you chat with your fellow travellers and learn a little about their backgrounds. Sitting opposite are two brothers named Ganon and Doria. They are knights in the Order of the White Mountain, warrior lords of Durinor who have pledged allegiance to protect the country from raids by the bandits of the Wildlands. They own a castle and land near Port Bax. Next to them sits Halvork, a merchant. His nose is swollen and his face is badly bruised, thanks to Lachlan, the overlord of Ragadorn. A little misunderstanding about port taxes lost him his cargo and most of his gold. Seated by the far door is a priest called Parsian. Like you, he's a Somlending, who has journeyed across the wildlands by coach on his way to Port Bax. Beside you sits a young woman called Vivica. She is a mercenary adventuress who earns her gold by fighting for it and sells her sword skills to the highest bidder. She's returning to Port Bax after having collected payment for a successful mission in Ragadorn. Not wishing to re reveal your true identity, you've, re you've pretended to be a simple peasant from the Home Guard plane. The travellers seem unaware of the invasion of Somerland by the Dark Lord Sagana. And there we have. Those are the people we are with. Two what happened to the top. victim lineup? Yeah. Merchant in the middle. Um, the priest. The one, there's one that looks hooded and dodgy. And the uh, young lady at the bottom. There we go. And it tells us to turn to 39. At dusk, the coach stops at an inn on the coast road to Port Bax. The cost of a room for the night is one gold crown for coach passengers and three gold crowns for anyone else. As you're about to enter, the coach driver demands to see your ticket. Do we have a ticket for the journey to Port Bax? Yes, we do. Cost us twenty gold. The driver nods and returns the ticket. The inn is warm but poorly, poorly furnished, and you must eat a meal here, which will cost you a gold crown, unless you have a meal in your backpack. We do. The Kai discipline of hunting cannot be used on your journey through the wildlands, as it is a barren wasteland inhabited only by creatures called sals. A smaller subspecies of Gaiac held to be relatively harmless and some rarer yet more dangerous predators. predators. The restriction on hunting in the wildlands applies only to your ability to fulfill instructions to eat a meal automatically. You may still use hunting when prompted to do so. However, until given further notice, you must obey instructions to eat meals as if you do not have hunting. As if you do not have hunting. This includes the current instructions. You must lose three endurance now if you cannot pay for a meal or consume one from the backpack. We have one meal. That is our last meal. So this could be a little bit um, tricky because we're now going to pay for a night in the room. We're down to two gold coins. We might get booted off this trip, off this uh, this coach. 
Do we still get our healing though, like for every passage? Yes, yes. We're we're, we're at maximum That's... health. Oh, we've got no That's problem with health. Bad then, I guess. You sleep deeply without being disturbed, and then rise at dawn feeling refreshed and alert. You gather your equipment and join the others as they are boarding the coach. For two days and nights, the coach trundles along the overland trade route across the wildlands. This is a particularly bleak and inhospitable region, its barren grey soil and stunted flora seemingly devoid of life. The coach makes rare stops along the way, mainly to allow the driver to catch a few hours of sleep. Early on the morning of the ninth day of your quest, there was an unfortunate accident. It's a bit linear, this book, isn't it? A bit linear. Somehow. Right. Uh, not to four, we have to go to two. You are travelling along a narrow section of coast road, which follows a dizzy course high beneath overhanging cliffs. A rock fall has blocked the road ahead and you are forced to stop to clear it. You are helping the driver to lever a large rock from the path of the carriage when you hear a rumbling sound. A boulder crashes down from the overhanging cliff, killing the driver before you can even make any attempt to save him. He was standing barely six feet away from you at the time of his death. Yes, railroading is the D&D term for linear. And the book is, this is quite a railroady book, unfortunately. Right, have we got Sixth Sense? Yes, we have. You said and if this was Call of Cthulhu, roll for sanity. <laughs> yes, as someone has gone squelch next to you. You sense that someone is on the cliff above and, and you were the intended victim of the attack. Somebody is de deliberately trying to kill you. I'd like to have a, a decision for chat to make. Haven't had a single decision for chat to make yet. It's really quite bad. Um. Uh, uh. Slowly, one by one, the other travellers appear at your side to stare in shock at the dead coachman. We must bury him, says the priest. You silently nod your agreement and prepare a grave in which to lay his corpse. As you are all walking back to the coach, you discuss what should be done. I know the road to Port Bax. I had better drive the coach, volunteers Halvork. I do hope we're not blamed for his death, says the priest nervously. It was an act of the gods, says Doria. I shall testify to that, says Ganon. Lies are never spoken by the knights of the White Mountain. It is true that in Durinor a true knight will only speak the truth, whether for his own good or ill. His words seem to measure the priest, and you are, you are all soon once more on the road heading towards the eastern horizon. It is late in the afternoon when you arrive at the coach station in a small coastal village known as Gorn Cove, which is mainly populated by outcasts, thieves, and souls. The death of the coachman is met by the villagers with great suspicion, but Doria's words convinced them that it was accidental. There was only one inn at the village, a tavern known as the Forlorn Hope. Its state of disrepair is typical of all the other hovels in this poor sea village, and a room for the night costs one gold crown. It's bleeding us dry of our cash. We still haven't got a decision for chat to make. Yeah. Oh, we will do after this one. We will. Oh, actually, no, we don't. The innkeeper is a thin old man with only one eye. He hands you a key and points to the balcony opposite. Number two, the red door he says in a reedy voice. The other travellers each pay their one crown, collect a key and make their way across the crowded tavern floor towards the stairs. We must make plans for tomorrow, says Doria. The others all nod in agreement. I suggest we meet here in the bar in one hour's time to decide what to do. As you close the red door of your room, for some unknown reason, you recall the words of Captain Kelman when you left Hungard Harbour. There is evil treachery at work here. Clearly the enemy already has plans afoot to thwart your quest. An hour has nearly passed when your thoughts are disturbed by a knock at your door. It's the innkeeper, and he's carrying a tray of piping hot food. With the compliments of one of your friends, he says, and leaves before you can ask which one. The food smells very appetising. If you have the Kai discipline of hunting, turn to 290. I thought that was a decision to make, but no, it wasn't. Chat. What? 
What? What about chat? I just said them we'll get to a choice sooner or later. Oh, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The food smells delicious, but you notice that there are two or three drops of a clear liquid on the side of the plate and another on the tray. First, you suspect that it's only water to touch the fluid and notice that it's sticky. You recognize uh, it as a sap from the Gnadon tree, a deadly poison much preferred by assassins because of its lack of flavor or scent. The shock of your discovery soon turns to anger. You grab your belongings and leave the room, intent on discovering the identity of your would-be killer. Okay, we have to deduct insur uh, insurance. We have to deduct deduct insurance. We have insurance. Have the insurance because we haven't got any food left. <laughs> By the time you reach the bar, the others are all seated at a large table, awaiting your appearance. Drawing closer to the table, you look carefully at your travelling companions, hoping to see something that will betray the identity of your would-be assassin. You will have to attack without giving any warning to your enemy, so study your fellow travellers carefully and make your decision. So this is where we assault the homeless guy that really had nothing involved in it. <laughs> okay, shall we have a little look? Yes. Okay. Right. Which of those? I'm, Mary, Mike, I'm looking at him. Don't you reckon? Indeed. And he looks a bit, a bit dodgy as well. I think the knights are okay. Those are the knights. Do you think? Or oh, maybe her? Uh -huh? No, I go. Mm. I go with. I go with your first choice. The way he's looking away from the page. Okay. Right. Everybody, you've got choices to make here. So it's time to the run, says the fat bloke in chair. <laughs> in chair, okay. Right. Do we attack the knight called Doria? The fat merchant called Halvork, the adventurous called Vivica, the priest called Parsian, or the knight called Ganon? Priest. I'm just going to say Ganon just because Legend of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a priest from um, Daniel. Yeah, I'm thinking priest. Um, you reckon Ganon? Yes. Everyone knows Ganon is evil. It must be destroyed. Well, it's either yeah. the priest or the female. Joker, which one? Any you Legend of Zelda players will know. <laughs> I, 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 I said the priest before you even finished. Okay. Snuffle Grunt went for Halvork the Merchant. Halakar records it's the priest. Richard, hello, Richard. How you doing? Richard goes to the priest. Shaw Piglet goes to the priest. Palmetto goes for the fatty. So at the moment we're on five for the priest. Two for the fatty and one for Ganon. Mm -hmm. Anybody I else? I stand by that. <laughs> Anybody else want to vote? Down with the priest. Down with the sort of thing. <laughs> yes. They're always evil, twisted bastards, anyhow. So, yeah, that works. <laughs> I don't disagree. Anybody else want to vote? <laughs> we to be honest, we have ten in chat, and we already have we only have two votes possibly remaining from other people who haven't voted yet, and uh, so it's going to be the priest. It looks like it, yeah. It is. It is. The other view uh, ones were outvoted. He deserves it, even if he's innocent. Why? <laughs> oh, the priest. You're talking about the priest. Okay. <laughs> the priest does not seem at all su su surprised by your attack. He takes a step backwards and draws a black sword from underneath his robes. Right, we've got to fight him. Oh, you are okay, pleased I to see us. <laughs> um, we've got a combat skill of 19. He's got a combat skill of 16. So we're at plus three on the table. 
And let us roll to see the results. Three. Three is seven damage to him, three damage to us. That takes him down to 16 endurance. We are on 15 endurance. Oh, one rubbish. Five damage to him. Four damage to us. Oh, that's, good. that's not good. Four is a bit better. Minus eight to him. Minus two to us. It's nice having like a fighting it. advantage here. But I, could, I could really do with rolling a little bit better. We have just beaten him, but this has been a... It's a bit, so it's a bit of a slobber knocker. Yeah, we, yeah, we're down to six endurance after that fight. That's pretty, pretty rough. If you win the combat, turn to 220. Just the bird. <sighs> right. Searching the man's body, you discover all you need to prove that he was the assassin. Inside his pockets, you find a half-empty vial of gnadum syrup, syrup. Gnadum sap, the deadly poison that was used to taint your food. Then there's a scroll written in Gayak, giving details of your expected arrival in Port Bax. He must have located you at Ragador and hatched his murder plans there. You notice that the weapon he carries is a Dark Lord blade fashioned of black steel and forged in the furnaces of Helgadad, the infernal city of the Dark Lords beyond the Durncrag range. Only there, and in a couple of the Darkland city's fortresses in all the vast Magnamund, can black steel be wrought. But the final proof of his true identity is the serpent tattoo on his left wrist. The harbour thugs who attempted to kill you before, before you had even left home guard bore exactly the same mark. His purse carries 23 gold crowns, which you may keep if you wish. Well, I wish. <laughs> yeah, I like the good. choice. If we wish. Can we, um, can we carve up his body and roast it for food? If you wish. If we need Russians. <laughs> At least we can pay for food now. Do we, do, we really, do we really want to eat a black heart for food? No. No, no option to take his sword? No, no. Hmm. No. The other travellers stare with horror and disbelief at what you've done. Before you can explain yourself, there's a loud crash as the front door is thrown open. In rush six armoured soldiers, led by the innkeeper. They are the town guard, and the furious one-eyed innkeeper is screaming at them to arrest you. Okay. Alucard's asked if the sword is magical. Haven't got a clue. Can't right? we haven't had <laughs> right? Okay, the six armored soldiers and the innkeeper have entered the inn. Do we try no. to escape by the rear door or do we fight them? Oh, no, rear, rear door. We haven't got much. We need to recuperate, don't we? We don't oh, have yeah, much endurance left, and there's six of them. Yeah, <laughs> what do you say, Daniel? Elbows in assholes. Elbows and assholes, indeed, indeed. If they want to die, we have a, we need to recuperate. I think. Oh, we do. Yes, yeah. We are in a lot of trouble. Run away, indeed. Was there an option to not attack anyone? No, there wasn't. Oh, so okay. So escape out the rear door. It's basically. Escaping. No, no. As in the first time, is was there a choice uh, to not kill any of those people? No, this book is really linear. We know that. Yeah. This book just there is a a storyline we're following very much. The first book was better by far. Yes. Yeah. Just kill and kill and kill and kill. Toss a stoat onto the nearest guard. Well, sadly, we don't have any stoats yet. Straw piglet. Straw piglet and his stoat. This is like Manfred in his hard box. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go for the eyes. And indeed. All right, we've got six votes for escape. There's four people in chat who haven't yet voted, but six escape. None for fight. I wonder why. 88. Survival instinct kicking in. Yeah, yeah. 
Skype, yes. Skype, yes, yes. Although a night, although night has fallen, hello, Elfite. A full moon casts its ashen light upon the village. Behind the tavern, you see a small wheelwright's shop. Outside the shop, are two horses hitched to a hay cart. Okay, do we have the Kai discipline of camouflage? Yes, we do. We do yeah, we do. So we turned 179. I've just seen on Discord, Mr. Baker is playing Alien Isolation, which is one of the scariest games ever. Okay, so Mr. Baker is hardcore. I played some Dune 2 earlier. I've played through the next two scenarios after last night's stream. So I'm about to start the scenario, which I believe introduces the Atreides Sonic Tanks. So... Uh, yeah. Racist hey, are uh, aliens, colonial marines. What's that? What about colonial? Uh, what? Aliens, colonial marines was notoriously awful. Was it? Uh, it was like go? three gunshots. You can kill a xenomorph. It was. It was awful. <laughs> my memberships. My Mercurius. <laughs> Thank you, Mercurius. Who got those memberships? Who turned green? Shall we take a look? Shall we take a look at who turned green? I need to get the stream up. Does anybody know who turned green? Can anybody see? Mr. Buster, GR, Ominel, um, Walter MC, and Nasharana. I recognize two of those names. Walter MC and of course the Come mighty now. the mighty Inspector Gadget himself. Oh, Omen Owl. The one who got me to bought buy these books. Write <laughs> <laughs> your answers on a postcard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Hang on, no, I recognise most of them. It's only GR I don't I don't think I recognise. No Saurian, Master Blaster, Omen Owl, and Walter MC. Great. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Good. Good, good. I like it when people who make comments in the chat from time to time and join us in, in the streams get the free memberships. Right. Right. Um, I'm just going to get this one out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. And using your Kai discipline of camouflage, you can hide undetected in the hay cart until it is safe to come out. Okay. So what do we want to do? Do we hide in the hay cart? Do we take a horse and leave the village? Or do we choose to enter the wheelwright shop instead? I'm probably going to hide in the cart. Okay, so we hide, leave, or shop. Yes, greetings, Mercurius, good man. Um, So, what do we do? Do we hide in the cart? Do we take a horse and leave the village, or do we enter the shop? It's not for what do you want to do, IQ? Hello, Richard. Hello, Mercurius. Thank you for your generosity, as always. And hide. And hide. I'm thinking hide. Yeah, but everyone's saying hide. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do the Assassin's Creed number one thing, hide in, hide in a barrel of hay. Yeah, just to sit on a bench and blend in with your hood up. You're doing all these... <laughs> you're doing all these younger person references here, aren't you? Because you know that my gaming pretty much ended in the night. No, 90s. not that old. Yeah, yeah. You're only 10 years older than me. Yeah, but I didn't do the go through all the PlayStations thing that you lot do. No, because you went out drinking. I didn't. We, we're totally opposite. You saw the nightlife. I saw the computer. 
I, I, when I when I was your age, I basically spent everything, like every, every penny I earned, on driving rally cars. So, and drinking, and drinking. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, wish to hide in the hay cart. Eighty two. When you are certain that the angry mob have passed, you jump from the hay wain and run stealthily along the street, dodging from one shadowy doorway to the next. Ahead and to your left, you see a shop with a creaking sign hanging above the door. And it says, Gunio's Weapon Smithy. There is light in the shop's solitary window and the weather-worn door is slightly ajar. Do we enter this shop or do we continue our escape? Mm. Let's enter the shop. How much money do we have? 24 gold. Hmm. Does mind enter in the shop? Let's go shopping. The old what year were you born? You born? I was born in Curious says. I was born in 1971. Oh, I had a, my this is my computer and console record. I had from in 1983, I got a Sinclair ZX Spectrum with 16k of RAM. A couple of years later, I bought a 32k RAM pack to make it go better. And then I didn't get anything else. My ma and my <coughs> <coughs> A mate of mine bought an original NES and a Sega Master System. <laughs> and then when I, when, I, when I passed for university, my dad got me a PC, and it was a 386 SX25 with two megabytes of RAM and a 40 megabyte hard drive. What was that, Windows 7? Windows? DOS 6? Oh, still on the DOS system. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I did have Windows 3. He's still talking about before I was born here, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While I was at university, my brother bought a Super Nintendo. So I used to, when I came back from university, I used to play that. Um, and I slowly upgraded my PC. But I got to the stage where I was upgrading it once every seven or eight years, and I, I slipped behind the times. And then I got a job at a computer games company. So I bought myself an original PlayStation, got a better PC. I've had, I've had a PS1, a PS2, an Xbox One, but I haven't played them all that much. And now I'm going back to PC gaming. <laughs> the cool I missed thing out is, the I missed out the, missed out the Amiga. I, I know we're going off top, topic a little bit. I managed the KB Toy Store, which people in the US would know. Maybe you guys over in the UK might. So I had every video game system that came out, I owned a month before it went on market. Hmm. I, I would, I'd have all my friends would come, you know, now my, mind you, I'm 25, 27 years old. And my wife would laugh at me because she said we looked like a bunch of little kids because we'd, you could link them together and, do player versus player uh -huh. on, on certain games but so yeah i i had every game system a month before they were released the market i'm sure my district manager would not have been pleased but it was cool good but i got bored i'd rather play D, &D so i sold them all. i, I returned them all <laughs> I see Mr. Baker's, um, he's clearly too scared to keep playing with his game because he has joined us in chat. Hello. <laughs> it's funny. Welcome, Mr. Baker. I just saw you were playing Alien Isolation. Yes. It's... Yes. Elf, right. wait, that was funny. You're a braver man than me, sir. Let me tell you that. <laughs> right. So are we entering this shop or are we escaping? I think everybody said shop, didn't they? Yeah. Um, oh, Richard said escape. 
but everybody else is saying enter. Right. 55. Uh, AC Black Flag is probably one of my favourites as well, Richard, by the way. AC Black Flag, what was that? Assassin's Creed. Black Flag. Assassin's Creed. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's the one where you get to sail off in the seas as a pirate. Oh, my, my lad's played that, yeah. <clears throat> right. A large man dressed in a leather apron is busy sharpening a fine broadsword. He's seated at a grindstone that sends a shower of sparks high into the air every time he touches the blade of the sword against it. He bids you good evening and asks if you are interested in buying the broadsword. Tis a beautiful blade, wrought of finest duranous steel. It can be yours for twelve golden crowns. Do we buy the broadsword? It will give us plus one to our combat skill. It costs twelve crowns. What's uh, yeah. our current combat the skill? Crowns less than, the, the crowns crown. less than gold. Yeah, yeah. We've got twenty-four gold at the moment. This will cost us twelve. Our combat skill is currently nineteen. Um, do we buy the sword plus one effectively? I think we should. Oh, we've got no pluses on our attack at the minute, have we? There's no option to rob him, Mercurius. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, if we run into any more priests, we need all the advantage we can get. Yeah, I'm thinking we get it. Okay. Yeah, alien isolation must fry your nerves, absolutely, mate. Yeah. All right, so our combat skill goes up to a lo yeah, lovely twenty. It's very nice. Yeah, it's a good idea, strong piglet. Buy the sword, then rob him with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, do we leave the shop by the front door or do you gentlemen prefer the back door? Well, it all depends. Do on we look like we need the back door? Do we? It's do freezing. We look like it's freezing. I'm saying we slip out the back, Jack. Shopkeeper, what are you trying to insinuate? I'm not saying nothing. No, I was on about the shopkeeper, not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, so you. Oh, yeah, three. we'll sneak around the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah sneak yeah. out the back. Yeah. Okay. So. We're sneaking around the back door. Turn to three. You enter a, a narrow alleyway behind the shop, at the end of which you can see a horse tethered by its reins to a wooden post. Do we take this animal and flee the village? Or do we not take the horse? Take the horse and flee the village, or just leave the alleyway on foot? I'm thinking on foot so we don't stick out. Pardon me. What about Joker and Iman? What do you say? I'm thinking I'm going on a horse will make us stick out, but the thing is, it will also make us a lot faster. So I think take it. Yeah. You damn right, you steal the horse. Only Mercurius is Australian. I, I can't do an Australian accent. I'm sorry, Mercurius. Um, Crikey, you got to go steal a horse, mate. That was probably better. If I've offended like you, Mercurius, it's all right. You can slap me if I ever meet you. <laughs> he'll probably, he, he's Australian, so he'll verbally slap you now. Hello, uh, hello, Squirrel Hermit. How are you doing? So we're confiscating hello. the horse. Yeah, you know, either way, we'll end up the next set encounter. This book is very, very linear. 
Yes. So we're taking the animal. I think you you sent chat off on the back door comment, John. <laughs> Did I? Why? Oh, a lot of people were just getting their heads in the gutter, not out of it. It's offended and he's not even Australian. Hey, thank you, you're wrong. I'm hopping on a plane thank now. You, okay, right. <laughs> Send me locations. Hello, you're wrong. Hello, Squirrel Hermit. <clears throat> so, yeah, Squirrel Hermit's been to um, big, a big... <laughs> Snuffle Glint's really off on one on the round, back, back door. I told you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Squirrel Hermit... Um, you've still got to tell us all about you can i mean i know you, you've put up some videos today about convention but i had a really busy day in the shop i didn't i didn't i, I saw that saw the videos appear so i need to i need to i need to watch your convention videos that's probably the best way to find out what you got up to yes yes right anyhow anyhow You spur the horse along the twisting village street, across a wooden bridge, and up a steeply winding path towards the crest of the cove. You may wish to make a note that you have visited Gorn Cove for future reference. Okay. For future reference. Gorn Cove. I saw a post on Facebook. If you can afford a con, you can afford deodorant. Yeah. That's been said for years. Yeah. Mm. Totally agree. True that. I Surprisingly, people don't take notes of it. Yeah. Soap, is, soap is cheap and water is free. You shouldn't have to stink. In the light of the moon, you catch a glimpse of the signpost pointing eastwards. You ride all night without sleep. As dawn breaks, you are greeted by a startling change of landscape. The barren wildlands have now given way to a vast expanse of moors and waterlogged fens known as Rat Swamp. Along the eastern horizon, there's a dark shadow. This is the forest of Duranor, the natural frontier of the mountain kingdom. The territorial border of Duranor is marked by this fertile timberland where it meets the untamed wildlands. After the unrelenting bleakness of the wildlands, the... Uh, uh, where is it? <coughs> Excuse me. After, after the unrelenting bleakness of the wildlands, the lush forest ahead is a welcome sight. You're less than a day's ride from Port Bax, but you are tired after your night ride and you must eat a meal or lose three endurance. You're not, you're now... All ah, right, okay. Yeah, it does say now that we can use hunting. So, because we're out of the, the craggy land. So we don't do eat meals anymore. We've got hunting. It tells us we trap a wild moor rat. Lovely. For your breakfast. That's, yeah. Yes. That sounds appetizing. Yeah. Mm. Can we make Is that sure real? You're wrong. Your state sues you if you collect a few gallons of rain. What? What? That seems outlandish. How do you get gallons of rain? You get like a water storage bucket. Yeah, and you, well, you'd have to have a funnel system, and stuff. yeah, funnel system, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and we're not, we're not eating our horse, we're curious. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, we are, hey, at, hey, hey. We are at a uh, a fork in the road. There's no signpost, to nice times, the nay. there's no signpost post to indicate. I get my teeth in gear. There's no signpost to indicate the directions. Do we take the left fork or the right fork? Left or right? I want to take the spoon. Yeah. They say it throws off the water table if everyone's doing it. I guess that actually how part some places you actually have to have a license to do the water collection off of your roof. I think everyone's I'm glad I'm in the UK, if that's the case. Yep. 
Let's scroll. Everyone's let's channeling their inner Justin John. Let's scroll. Just posted. Scroll Homer t- just posted something. Some places you have to have a permit to do that. I don't know why, because the rain is just for, just rain is free and by nature. So you know that's just got great, greedy yeah, people wanting more money out of nothing. Yeah, the politicians want their money, so you know. Oh, you know they want free money out of nothing. Oh, let's charge nature for pissing. Yeah, pretty much that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm at, we can do it. <laughs> yes, drop Piglet. <laughs> I was going to say, talking about rain, I always, I always like the, the quote the uh, one of our greatest comedians said to his daughter when his daughter when his daughter asked him, "Why does it rain?" The spy Milligan told his daughter, "Well, the angels are desperately need a wake." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying let's go left. You're on mute, yeah. Unmute yourself. Everybody <laughs> says left. Oh, Master, unmute yourself. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that I'd muted myself. So I was there getting stroppy that everyone was talking over me while I was trying to read, and you're actually telling me to unmute myself. Yes. <laughs> okay. oh dear. The road follows a course along the top of a high grassy ridge for many miles before turning northwards to the coast. You pass a village where the houses curve in a semicircle around the large pond of stagnant, stagnant water. As you ride through, a gaggle of solved children come running towards you, shouting and throwing stones. You descend into the deep valley beyond and gradually the moor gives way to richer land that has been cleared and ploughed. The hillside opposite is heavily wooded. You're not far from the coast and you can smell the sea air and see the tall cliffs with their multicoloured bands of rock jutting out into the foam-flecked ocean. You're passing through a small copse when you hear hear desperate cries for help. Do you wish to aid the people, because it sounds like they're in trouble, or do you choose to ignore their desperate pleas? Aid the people and ignore oh. that, please. Oh, got How it. do I feel? Got Daniel Kearney. Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Help Thank the people. You, On that Help note, people. we'll ignore the people. <laughs> it looks like we have a Saxius. Uh, a Michael Stronghold, a Malachi, a Richard P, and O'Neill Flynn. O'Neill Flynn, yeah. Again, four names that are regulars on the, our channel or friends of the channel. Yes. Yep. Yep. I know yep. at least two of them. Yep. Marvelous. Marvellous. Mercurius is going... Uh, Mercurius has got out of the wrong side. It's morning It's morning in Australia. Mercurius has just got up, and he's just got out of the wrong side of the bed. He's got a hangover, and he's in a bad mood. So he's, he's doing all the, all the evil stuff in, in this... Uh, everybody else says help. Everybody else. Well, now, I'm going to go with Mercurius. Okay, you go, you go with Mercurius. I'm on his side because, you know, I had today off, so I've been drinking since I don't know when. So, yeah, I'm going with Mercurius. Well, we do have six votes for assist and three votes for ignore now. So, yeah, I also say assist. You say assist. Hold on, Suffolk Grunt. Hold on, Suffolk. Daniel. Daniel goes on about um, he's on his third wife. Is this <laughs> Snuffle Grunt? You're on your fifth? Holy crap! I'm a man. I'm an amateur. Yeah, wait, just because he said it doesn't make it automatically true. By the way, Dan. 
Well, well, well. It's the internet, remember? Well, I sold my first wedding ring. I still have my second, and I have my third. So I can actually prove it. No, the question, the question you should be asking, are they piled up one, one on top of the other? See, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> 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 they may have been. Third one, third one, third one. Well, I'm on the fence. Hey, I knew a pig. I'm and sinker. I knew a pig farmer had a shovel and a pack, bag of lime. You never know. It is indeed funny oh. to think about the fifth wife. Yes, yes. See you later, Oh, look. Yes. Oh, Halaka. Oh, Halaka. See you, Halaka. Yeah. See you, Halaka. Um, hello, Gala, XXX. Richard believes everything he hears on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the curious is just, that's what you mean. <laughs> Palmetto says he's on your page, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that, Palmetto. That's cool. You know what? Hold on. I'm gonna. We've we've chosen to aid them. Aid has won just. But before uh, straw piglet has confirmed it. Day off two started early. Okay. <coughs> All right. Seems to be a trend here. Half of us are day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> this is a British sized can. Nice large can. Enjoy. What is it? 440 mil? Yes. How do you join the voting? You just, when there's an option, you just vote. That's all. Um, this Leave is a little a comment in the live chat. Yeah, that's all. This is a this is a hobgoblin roll. Just... Thanks for joining us, mate. Though appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let that settle a bit. Yes, just yell at us, yell at us if you want to uh, um, vote. You spur your horse through the tangle of trees. Until you arrive at a small clearing, six souls are jumping, jumping excitedly up and down around the body of a man who is writhing in agony on the ground. A strangely carved black spear is stuck in his chest, and lying beside him is the body of a knight of the White Mountain. The creatures are taunting the man and shrieking at each other. They appear to be unconcerned by the man's obvious pain. Uh, right, we have if if we have the kindest bit of healing, we can try and save his life. <laughs> voted for aid yeah that's what we've chosen to do um yeah. so do we help him or do we attack the souls help him or attack the souls help or attack help mm -hmm. I'm so, sorry, I'm help so help or attack what's our health like our health is fine. how many did it say that they were uh, six. Our health is back up at 19. Help him. Oh, attack. You'll say attack. Gala says I attack. think attack. You think attack. Mercurius says attack, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six helps there. Right, we're right. Attack, attack. Classic two attacks here. We've got five attacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven helps. And I'm didn't one of you in chat in, in here say um help him? I think I said help. Oh piglet. Yeah, okay. So it's eight five. Eight five, 
on help. Help it is. Help it is. Oh, there's a picture of him, by the way. That's only a flesh wound. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's still fine. Yeah. He's got his limbs. You try to apply your hands to the injured man's chest, but the Sarls are tugging your cloak and trying to drag you away from him. Uh, it says here, if you have the Kai discipline of camouflage, how is this going to be useful here? We do. Let's find out. During your, the period of your Kai training, Kai Mistress Riverblade taught you a rudimentary knowledge of the many languages and dialects of northern Magnamund, one of which was Saal. The creatures in this clearing are Saals, and they're screaming at you that the wounded man is not a man at all. They say he is a Hellgast, a powerful shape-changing servant of Dark Lord Zagana. Okay. Ooh. Right, so... That's given us a bit of advice. So do we believe the Sars are telling the truth and look in the man's pack to try and confirm? Or do we su suspect the Sars are lying and do we try and fend them off with a weapon? So are the Sars telling, telling the truth or are they lying? Look in the bag. I think search is pack, yeah. Chris, yeah. Um, yep. Frisk him. Okay. Oh, Treat nice, like Garland. Black... Congratulations, man. Treat, Treat him like a black man in the Bronx. <laughs> oh, well done, Gala. I'm not good at chess. I'm only as good at chess as the person opposite me. If they're good, it forces me to play better. But if they're shit, then I just don't really pay attention. My, uh, my, I don't mind playing chess, but I've never actually played played it to actually play play it seriously. Yeah, I've never played competitively. No, I mean, I mean, I just I've just kind of play, played it played it just enough to know know the know the rules of it, and yeah. that was about it. You know, family game nights. No, that's about it. Now, Gus, on the other hand. I'm just going to remind you, because you've been playing Ticket to Ride tonight. I am England, Britain's ninth-ranked Ticket to Ride player, according to the last Ticket to Ride British Championships. Okay. Um, I'm not being angry, Tom. What is Ticket to Ride? It's a board game. Okay. A board game. The annoying thing is, for my wife, the annoying thing is, I entered, it, we went to, it, it was at the Games Expo, um, when first year I went, and myself and my wife both went and we entered the tournament. When we play at home, she usually beats me. There was, about, <laughs> there, was, there, there was more than 80 people entered the tournament. We pl basically played the game all day. And I finished the day in ninth place and she came out 40th. Wow. Oh, I bet that got her gallstones going. Oh, yeah. I bet that's the sort of, sort of subject to bring up every now and then. Yeah. That's like, oh. I I played darts for years. I was in a dart league. And you were the, the top two hundred. Freaking hell! The one year I took home more trophies and awards than anybody else in the dart league, and there was about two hundred people in the league. So it I, got, I, well, no, it got to the point it at the uh, end of year banquet. They were calling my name so much, I started having my other team members go up and get the trophies because people started booing me because I was winning so much. That's a sign of a misspent life, though, isn't it, being good at darts? You've basically spent your life in pubs, haven't you? Well, my employees knew to call my pager, my cell phone, or the bar rather than my house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Right, right, we're we're 
But but you say that. But how, how do you explain the the youngest whiz kid of darts that's never been seen a pub yet? <laughs> uh, he, he's just he's just a, a genius, though, isn't he? Yeah. Indeed. <clears throat> I mean, his yeah. father is a dart player, though. Yeah, yeah. I won't even bring up the golf club. Yeah. Right, so we're going to search in his pack. Ooh, you search in his pack and are horrified to find that it contains a scroll of human skin upon which a message has been written in a strange runic script. The only word you can make out is Kai. You also find... An evil-looking dagger with a black blade and a fissured block of cold obsidian. If you possess a crystal star pendant, you suspect this, which we do, you suspect this damaged block was a sorceress item which may have temporarily disrupted the pendant's power. Oh. Okay. These items bear the hallmarks of the Dark Lord's craft. You sense that something is very wrong here. You drop the pack as quickly as, quickly as it were red-hot and turn to mount your horse. To your dismay, you find it is no longer there. The loathsome souls have stolen it. Bastards. Wearily, you realize that you have to continue your long journey on foot. <sighs> goody, goody, goody. I don't know. What is it with these notes on dead skin? Yeah. I was thinking good. that too. Yeah, we have that in Call of Cthulhu, don't we? Yes. As my dead character knows all too well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Such a just. <laughs> Cheers to our piglet. We did start steal, well, steal the horse anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have been walking without rest for nearly two hours. After a long and gradual ascent, you reach the crest of a hill and see the pines of the Duranor Forest stretched out before you. The road bears eastwards and enters this vast timberland at the point where a large wooden tower has been constructed. You can see the silhouette of a soldier standing on guard on the tower's lookout platform. Yes, everybody needs to play more Call of Cthulhu. Elf Bank. Everybody, but you do. Yeah, you definitely do. Right. Okay, talking about that, do, do you know? Do you know Call of Cthulhu or Rich Express is going to be turned into a game on Kickstarter? Yes. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's, it's an impending um, it's an impending Kickstarter. Yeah. We're talking about the the RPG, the tabletop RPG um, gala um, on Tuesday nights in my Discord. I run this. It's just a call, a call of Cthulhu campaign. That is horror on the Orient Express. <laughs> Which is uh, rather um, rather um, beefy, shall we say? And, there is. And, I can, and I can also confirm that the name is not a lie. There is much horror and there is much Orient Express. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And there's much death of Iman's characters. Because Iman's there's much very... sanity <laughs> loss. There's much me keep getting shot. You're a very inquisitive player, aren't you? You poke your nose into absolutely everything, which is a noise. You, you would need to really share the poking nosing in uh, Call of Cthulhu. Um, whereas you do tend to tend to do most of the poking of nose. And I can't help myself. He can't help himself. I just I try and put like, you know that meme with the woman's like thinking. You see all those formulas on the screen. That's me. Yes. <coughs> God, I'm done. My cough, my cough and cold, almost gone. But I've just got this little something there that just won't shift. Look, it's always the last niggling bit for a day and a half. Yeah. Right, okay. So what do we do? Do we continue on our journey along the road towards the forest and the watchtower? Or do we avoid <coughs> do we avoid the watchtower and make a wide detour around the hill and enter the forest further south? So watchtower or no watchtower? It's the best way to describe this vote. Watchtower or no watchtower? 
So just two options. Uh, I'm going to answer this with a Bob Dylan all along the watchtower. I was about to yeah, say that. Yes, I was thinking that. I was about to say that. <laughs> Keith says no watchtower. I'm going with Jimi Hendrix. You're going with yes, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix also. Indeed. Right. Well, Jimmy all the way. Snufflegun says Watchtower. Elfpay, when do you run Call of Cthulhu? Because that's much more interesting to me than D&D &D is. And I'd definitely he, be down for that if I'm free for ran, that slot. He ran a session um, for us a little while back. Um, and it was good. It was, it was good. Uh, it was his own his own uh, home-written adventure. Oh, interesting. You don't currently. Oh, okay. Well, whenever you do, uh, please do let me know because that's something I'd definitely be interested in, mate. We're currently at six for the Watchtower and three for no Watchtower. So we need some more votes. Anyone else wish to vote? Well, I'm watching chat. I don't see any more votes come in. Me neither. No. Looks like all along the watchtower, then, eh? All along the watchtower, yeah. indeed. Indeed. Guess who I'm going to be listening to tonight afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> Zatuok goes for watchtower. Hello, Zatuok. I've not seen you for a little while. Are you keeping Hello. your... Uh, your other half in check tonight is that is that why you're here you're watching watching making sure he behaves himself uh one, two two three two you are less than 20 yards from the what from the tower and the guard steps forward and demands to know your business you notice that the soldier is wearing the red coat of a Duranese men at arms and realize that you've come now come to the border of Duranor. You will need to find some way of getting past this vigilant guard. We have the discipline of hello, no, Saurian. Bit late with your vote, um, but we are going to the watchtower so. Uh, hey, sorry, and you got to get to the membership, dude. He did. He did. 149. This is this is sixth sense. You can sense this guard is a loyal and steadfast Duranese soldier. If you were to attempt to bribe him, he would consider it a grave insult upon his honor and likely attack you. Do we show him the seal of Hamadal, or do we prefer not to show it and pretend to be a merchant? On no. Well, I think show it. Seal. I'm thinking show it. Yeah. Or bluff. Show seal oh. or bluff. Dan just disappeared, but he got his boat in. Yes, he did. He did. Uh, yes, Daniel. Daniel has disappeared. Show, show, show. I'm just going to see. Show's winning. Show's definitely winning. Yeah, show is five one at the moment. Um, oh yeah, look at this. Uh, there are more votes coming in now. Show, show him the seal. Show him the seal. Okay, we're showing him the seal. Two, two, three. Had a happy family tonight because uh, my uh, my daughter's been picked for the first team again for Sunday, which is uh, um, which is marvellous. They are at home against Loughborough. Ooh. More trip for them to come come to our home ground. 
Yeah, well, Loughborough are really good as well. Really, really good. Oh, they always have been underestimated. Mm. Yeah. The guard stares in awe at the magnificent ring. The legend of the Seal of Hamadal is well known to the people of Durinor. It is said that of all the lost treasures of the Durinese, the Seal of Hamadal is the one they would not wish to see returned. The, oh. uh, the guard's anxious face shows he clearly recognizes the ring's dreadful significance. His commanding officer, a knight of the White Mountain called Jenon, is absent at present. He's on the road to Gorn Cove in the company of one of your fellow countrymen. Despite being unable to consult his superior, the guard knows that he's duty-bound to let you pass. I will not hinder your urgent mission, but I cannot help you further, save to set you on the road for Port Bax. Continue on this forest path and you will come to a fork near a stunted oak tree. Take the left track. It is by far the quickest way. You thank the loyal guard and push on once more into the forest. A mile or so along the road, you come to the fork and take the left track. It leads to a stone bridge across the Rhymer Rift, the channel that separates Durinor from the rest of northern Magdamund. The dark waters of the Rhymer Rift are over one mile deep and up to two miles across at its widest point. A small hut with a flat roof has been erected in the centre of the bridge, but it seems unoccupied as you're, and you are able to cross to the far side without difficulty. Near to the Grand Bridge, you find a signpost. It says... Port backs three miles. You exhale a oh, sigh of relief, for you should arrive at the city in less than an hour. Turn to two six five. At dusk on the tenth day of your quest, you experience your first sight of the magnificent city of Port Bax, like a diamond set into the green velvet shoreline. The shining towers of the city glimmer in the ashen light of a waxing moon. To the north lie the harbour and the formidable war fleet of the Durinese navy. To the east, beyond the moss-covered city walls, stretches the dense forest of Durinor. And before you, on the crest of a hill, stands a castle, tall and proud, the crowning glory of this beautiful seaport. You enter Port Bax through an unguarded gate in the verdant city wall and make your way through the darkening streets towards the harbour area. As you turn into a tree-lined avenue, you notice the white stone steps of a domed building to your right. You stop to read the brass plaque that is fixed to the wall next to its grand doors. City Hall. Despite the late hour, the twin doors are still open. Do we have tracking? No, we don't. Okay. Do we wish to enter the City Hall, or do we continue on our way towards the harbour area? City Hall or harbour? Those are your choices. City Hall. City Hall. I'm wondering what the tracking was for. Mm. But yeah, City Hall. Hall. Oh, Keith says Harbour. We've got Hall. Okay. <coughs> Will be or should be? <laughs> should be. Should be. <laughs> mm. Hall or harbour? You'll probably find them in the basement all tied up, ready to be whipped. Just going to put my heater on because it's gone cold here. It's gone very cold. Ah. So another hall and oh there's two harbors there so we're at five three one two Hey, we're at, five, we're at five three for City Hall. Anybody else wish to vote? City Hall or Harbour? Oh, 
Oh, dear. <sighs> My long, old week started to catch me up, catch up with me on Fridays now. Looking forward to... Uh... Hello, Jeb. Jeb says, Harbour. No, sorry, it says City Hall. 6-4. Oh, oh. So, 6-4, and we have 12 people, so City Hall can't be beaten. It is the City Hall. 84. Just inside the main door sits a kindly old man with a long beard. He's studying a huge leather-bound book that rests on a lectern before him. He is so engrossed with his reading that he has not noticed you have entered the city hall. Do you wish to approach the man and ask him the way to the consulate of Somerland? Or do we leave the city hall and attempt to find our own way? Speak to the old man or just leave. Speak to the old man. Speak to the old man. Speak to the old man or leave. Snowfall gun says approach him. I'm actually going to go with leave on this one. Okay. Keith reckons leave as well. Um, Gala and Jeb, I'm guessing those are votes for um, speaking to him. And Mr. Baker says speak to him. Me so and Keith, Daniel has brothers Daniel in was, blood forever. Daniel has found the power button on his computer. By the looks of things, he's just waiting in the in the wings. Palmetto says, "Speak." All right, I'm back. You're back. Sorry, you man. found the on-off switch. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> you got your buy in, though, just about, so you're all right. <laughs> it, it, it's pretty bad when my $80 tablet and $100 cell phone is a lot better than my $800 computer. <laughs> All right, so we are, we're we talking to the man. How are you anyway, Brian? How are you? Hello, Brian. Hello. 211. Brian, evening. The old man looks up and zaps you with a bolt of lightning. <laughs> uh, the consulate of Somerland, he says with surprise, taken aback by your sudden and unexpected appearance. Quickly composing himself, he says, Why, of course, it's in Allen's Square, down at the harbour. Turn right when you leave and right again, and uh, right again at the end of the avenue. That will take you to the Red Gate. Of course, you'll need a red pass to enter, as the Somme Lending Consulate is in the naval quadrant of the city. It's a restricted area. You ask the man how you can obtain a red pass. From the captain of the port watch, he says. You're obviously a stranger to Port Bax. There are few indeed that do not know the answer to that question. The Port Watchtower is at the end of the avenue, just as you make a turn for the Red Gate. You thank the old man for his help and leave the City Hall. I don't know why, but Nate, I don't believe him. Nate, but I'm only Kelsey when I'm cooking, just so you know. <laughs> Anyhow, um, So we think the old man's lying. Well, we'll find out. At the end of the avenue, the cobbled street turns abruptly to the right. Opposite this point is a tall white stone building with a plaque fixed above its door. You can see that the cobbled street continues on for a few dozen yards before it ends in a high stone wall. 
There's a large red gate set into this wall. It's guarded by two soldiers. Beyond the gate, you can make out the mass of several ships moored in the harbour. Do we enter this watchtower, or do we just go straight to the gate? Watchtowers. <clears throat> Give me page in it. Not Jimmy Page. What's it? And you know what I mean. Hendrix. Give me yeah. Hendrix. Give me Hendrix. Yeah, last time was Bob Dylan's version. This time we'll do Jimi Hendrix's version. Watchtower. And Paul. We do that. Although Jimmy Page was a better guitarist. Just saying. Than Jimi Hendrix, I don't know, mate. Might start a fight about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the thing is, if Hendrix had lived past twenty-seven, like he would have been way better. But he never even achieved his full potential. Well, he shouldn't have been doing drugs, coke, and hookers and booze. They say, although, I'm not saying Paige didn't do that neither. So, <laughs> I think they all did. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's why they were rock stars. Yep, I got to see Jimmy it. Page twice in concert, that was pretty cool. Nice, so uh, Planting Page and uh, Black Crows and Page, that's pretty cool, anyhow. We're entering the port watch tower then are we yeah <laughs> palmetto uh, you, you could argue that you could argue that palmetto yeah because i think the same about kurt cobain like if he hadn't died like his music would have ended up becoming a lot worse because of his voice and everything else as horrible as it is to say i know brian i was rambling I always say, tell the wife whenever she goes out of town, I'm calling the hook, calling the hookers and ordering the coke and going and getting a case of whiskey. And only one of those three things is usually true. It's the last one. Well, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the only That's, thing you can yeah. get away with. <laughs> You are standing in a large empty hall. Opposite are two doors, seemingly identical, except for what is engraved on their polished surfaces. Do we enter the door what marked white passes, or do we enter the door marked red passes? I was young once too. Wait, I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow, someone who's actually younger than me. Mm. Um, white passes or red passes? Red. I'm saying white. White or red? White, yeah. Always red if there's no purple. Now this brings up that other song. Uh, it was Jefferson. Purple rain, purple rain. Jefferson, uh, the Jefferson uh, Starship. They do the song about Alice in Wonderland. Pick the pill. I'll paint the roses red. Paint the roses red. Paint the roses red. With her head. Gala, you would like White Claw. I'm not being insulting, but you would. Being that you're 20 years old. I can understand that. I don't know who I don't know who are White Claw. Uh, it's one of them tutti fruity spritzer type drinks. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a drink, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like four and a half never percent. It. It's it's never heard of it. Never heard of it. Consider a tutti fruity light beer. It's very close to what we would call super uh, special brew. Huh? I'm not being insulting. I'm just saying with the age group, that's understandable. 
Either that or it'll be white lightning. Hey, right. So, red it is then. 62. Ryan, yes. White Claw is like Zima. Correct. I, I've never heard of Zima either. Well, that's an American thing. Oh, I've heard of that. I think it was mentioned in a TV show once. A proper Brit would not drink a Zima if they had to shoot him in the head. Honestly. Ah. Oh, you're from Czech. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, well, yeah, the, the Czech Republic does have a little bit of beer history, just a bit, um, given that pretty much that was where the whole sort of Well, well, the Czechs drink more beer than any other, any other country in Europe. Wow, did not know that. I thought that would have been uh, German. Uh, honestly. Can yeah. confirm. Yeah. My two Czech friends are massive alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, Budvar and Pilsen. Yeah, exactly. Um, as in, Budvar was... It's proper Budweiser, not the American piss water. Um, to get, I, I honestly hate to admit this. To get a proper beer in America, you have to go to the distributor and get at least the Canadian beer. American made. Of course. Ah. Pilsner style beer yeah. is originally from che uh, from the Czech Republic. Yeah, right. it is, um, right. and it's it's a lot stronger than the pilsners you get outside of outside of there. Yeah. Uh, like Labatt's and Molson are really good, but they're still not. They're still only like five and a half or so, unless you get like the Triple Crown or I. I forget. But Correct. I, they both make one that's 10%. But... I've been trying to explain this point to Canadians. Lager and beer are not the same thing. Correct. Yes. You're right. That is a beer, right? That is a... Okay, it is a, a pale beer. It's a golden ale, but that's a beer. It's not a lager. Right. Anyhow, with that, but anyway. Right. Is the education over now? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Right. Where were we? Where were we? You enter a large room which is filled with leather-bound ledgers and reams of files. A man wearing the uniform of a Duranese a naval officer is seated at a large desk opposite the door. He peers at you inquisitively from behind a huge book and says, You must have pressing business in the naval quadrant to apply for a red pass at this late hour. I shall need to see your access papers and proof of your commanding officer's authorization. Um, okay. Do we show him the seal of Ham Ham uh, seal of Hamadal? Um, do we? Oh, if you've cut, we've got the options here. Show him the seal of Hamadal. Do not show him, but if you've collected the necessary access papers on your quest, do that, or leave. We haven't got the access papers. We've got the access papers. No, no. So we've got to show him the seal of Hamadal. Yeah. Yeah, that is a hobgoblin. It's various types of hobgoblin. It's not a strong one. I mean, it's only 4.2, but it's got a lot of flavor to it. Just a pleasant Elf drink. I like, I like your gaming shop. That's pretty cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Okay. The man stares at the seal with a look of shocked dismay. Without saying a word, he gets up from his chair and beckons you to follow him up a flight of spiral steps that lead to a domed chamber. Here you meet the captain of the port watch. She listens intently as you tell of the war now raging in Somerland and of the nature of your urgent mission in Durinor. Issue a red pass, she orders. Top priority. You collect your red pass, leave the port watch tower and hurry along the street towards the harbour guards. Mark it down. Red pass as a special item. Well, that went well. Better than expected. Yes. Well, I don't know that I want to go towards the guards. One of the guards steps um, forward and demands to see, see your pass. We have a red pass. 202. The soldier salutes and allows you to pass through the red gate. You return his salute and walk into an open square lit by the tall beacons lining the quayside. To your relief, you catch the sight out of the marble pillars of the Somerland Consulate, the familiar sun flag of your country flying above it in the fresh night breeze. Mm -hmm. flag. As you climb the stone steps, your kai cloak and tunic are recognized by the Somlending guards on duty at the main door. They disappear inside and quickly return in the company of a tall, grey-haired official. His anguished expression suddenly changes to a smile of joy as he beholds your travel-stained car uniform. Hope beyond hope. Thank the gods that you live, Lone Wolf. The scant, that scant news has reached us. The scant news that has reached us from the West has caused us great alarm. You are ushered inside and are taken immediately to the envoy of Summerland, Lord Lieutenant Rygar. I think this might be just about the end of the book. Oh. Oh, no. You f your first meeting with the Lord Lieutenant comes as something of a shock. You had perhaps been half expecting him to be a servile old man, typically of the, typical of the envoys from the, from the southern lands that seem to plague your king's court with their delegations. But the man clad in heavy chainmail standing before you now is neither old nor servile. You're soon to learn that Lord Lieutenant Rygar is an exceptional man. Born of a sumlending father and a Duanese mother, he has become something of a legend in the city. In the past decade, he has led, a, led an alliance of the two nations to victory against the invading ice barbarians of Kalt. Wise in peace, fierce in war, you could not have wished for better company on your quest for the Summer Sword. Rygard orders that a sumptuous meal be served. It is by far the best food you have tasted since the war began. During the feast, you recall the events that have brought you to, to, to Port Bax and reflect on the daunting challenge that still lies before you. After the meal, Rygar sends for his physician who attends to all your wounds. His skill and potions restore six endurance points, which, yeah, we're, we're at maximum anyway. So Then he advises you to sleep, for you are to leave with the Lord Lieutenant for Hamadal first thing in the morning. Spare no one. Yes. Gala, you've been playing a bit of uh bit of Baldur's Gate then. Spare no one. Shortly after dawn of the next day, you are taken to an enclosed garden at the uh, rear of the consulate, where Rygar and three of his best soldiers await you on horseback. They are to be your bodyguard and guides on the 830-mile ride to Hamadal. The streets of Port Bax are just beginning to come to life as you ride through the town. Passing under a moss-covered city gate, you now feel very confident that your mission will succeed. It's almost over, then how are we going to die at the last moment? No, we're not going to die. Have some, have some optimism. <laughs> Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes. <laughs> A somlen somlending father. Somlending. Um, Siege of Dragons. I've not played Siege of Dragons. Spear. Um, I there are bits of the various add-on packs which aren't great. There are some good bits, um, but uh, there's a. Yeah, there's a few 
They had on packs for Baldur's Gate. I prefer the original Baldur's Gate um, without the add on packs, but with the redone graphics. So, right, we've got to get a number 0 to 4, 176. Yeah, Icewind Dale is very linear. It's it's a, a big fight fest. But it's one tough fight after another. I mean, I heard about the questionable dialogue and didn't that get fixed? But um, the other things I've heard about Siege of Dragon Spear is it's, it's not meant to be particularly um, inspiring in terms of its storyline. One thing I liked about the original Baldur's Gate was the amount of freedom you had with it to wander around. Uh, Ayla, the did, did, did you ever get to play any of the uh, expansions for Icewind Dale? Uh, there I were like think two it, of them, I believe. I, I mean... I've, I've got Icewind Dale in a uh, humble bundle um, when I got them all on the big big offer. Um, and I, I don't think there's any of the expansions with it there, and I can't remember whether I played them or not back in the day. I didn't pay as they much had one. Hmm? They had one expansion that had a graveyard that was just brutal. I mean, I spent, yeah. I mean, I spent that was brutal for the start. Yeah. I've got yeah. Planescape Torment. I've got Planescape. Planescape Torment was part of that humble bundle, but I like the traditional D D elements of Baldur's, the original Baldur's Gate, the freedom, wandering around as a party, meeting lots of NPCs. I'm not a big fan of the Planescape environment. Oh, see, I love Planescape. I think it's really cool. But as a DM, I did not like it. It's just right. too much. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's up. Where have we got to? For three days and nights, you have ridden along the highways as it tra the highway as it travels up the ri up the river valley of the Duranon. In the distance are the peaks of the Hamadal Mountains, one of its one of the highest ranges in all Magnamund. The capital of Duranor lies at the very centre of these mountains. It is now the morning of the fourteenth day of your quest. You have made camp near a waterfall where the fast flowing Duranon drops over one hundred and twenty feet. You are about to leave when a group of six hooded riders appears on the forest highway above, blocking your exit from the camp. Lord Lieutenant Rygard demands that they let that they let you pass, adding. Hold on. That's uh, that's where I got. Is that yeah, bloke at the uh, table? Yeah, um, on my desktop, I've I have got Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. I bought the there's a, there was a humble bundle recently that um, put bundled a load of them in for about twelve quid. And so th those are the ones I've installed so far. There's also Neverwinter Nights and and some other bits and bobs in there. And, and I probably won't play. I probably won't play all of it. Elemental but. Evil. Have that installed. My problem with Temp Temple of Elemental Evil is it uses third edition rules, and I'm not a big fan of third edition rules. Well, my problem was once you got into the elemental modes, it started seizing up. Yeah, all right. But. All right. Well, ha have a good night. Waking seven hours to go directly to a tournament. That's going to be your weekend. Well, good luck. Good luck in the tournament. Yes, Snuffle, it is third edition. Yeah. Maybe 3.5. I can't remember. Baldur's Gate isn't third edition. No, no, no. No, um... The other one we were talking about. Neverwinter Nights is third edition. Um, yeah. And 
Temple of Elemental Evil is three. That's third edition. But Baldur's Guide, yeah. Baldur's Gate is AD and D second edition, and Icewind Dale one was second edition. Wasn't Icewind Dale two third edition? Correct. Yeah. I think. I think. Yeah. I think you're correct on that. When you say Kotor, are you talking about the Star Wars one, Snuffle Grunt? Knights of the Old Republic, is that? Yeah. I believe so, anyway, if we're thinking about the same thing. I'm trying to think which, which is the add on pack that I've currently got installed for uh, Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Okay, one. yeah. Um, and I, to be honest, I've ignored. It's offered me multiple times to go to the add-on areas because I played them originally and I didn't like them. I, I, I completely ignored them. It's not the Dragon's Pier one. It's the other one. Um, takes you to what's its beard and Durlag's Tower and all that sort of stuff. Not, I'm not a fan of those those areas at all. I can't remember the name of it. No, Meadow, I think you're correct. Like no, no, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 2 was second edition. It was? Okay. 100%, yeah. All right. 100%. I don't know. It's been so long since I played them, I can't remember. Tales of the Sword Coast, that's it. That's it. I don't like Tales of the Sword Coast. That's the one I don't like. I know what you do like, though, John. What? Reporting. What? Acknowledged. Reporting. <laughs> Man. That was June 2 last night. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, Lord Lieutenant Rygar demands that they let you pass, adding that you bear a world dispatch. In Durinor, it is a treasonable offence to hinder a king's messenger. Unfortunately, the cloaked riders are not impressed by his warning. They remain where they are. If you do not care for reason, perhaps our swords will turn your tails, says Rygar. He draws his sword and orders his men to attack the cloaked riders do we have the yes we have sixth sense there's a strong aura of evil surrounding these cloaked riders you're warned that you should not follow Rygar and his men on their impetuous charge you shout a warning to them in the hope it will halt their attack but it's already too late you cannot be heard above their battle cries and the thunder of the horse's hooves uh, two seven seven. Oh, sorry, um, I am going to have to end the stream in a bit because I I've had a little bit of back pain this week and it's got worse tonight. So I'm going to, in a few minutes, I'm going to end the stream so I can just soak in a hot bath. Well, we are close to two hours. We are close That's to completely hours. understandable. I blew my back out but today. As Rygar and his men... Yeah, right gallant, Monday night. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, th Throne of Baal was second edition, definitely. As Rygar and his men gallop nearer to the riders, one of the cloaked horsemen draws a black staff from beneath his robes. A fierce blue flame shoots from his, its twisted tip and explodes beneath Rygar's horse, toppling him and sending Rygar head over heels into the dense undergrowth. Furiously, Rygar's men attack the cloaked riders with their swords. Their sharp blades slice clean through their enemies' cloaks and bodies, but to no effect. These are Helgast, evil undead agents of Dark Lord Zagana. They have the ability to adapt, adopt human form, yet they're invulnerable to normal weapons. The cloaked staff bearer gives a hideous laugh that tears at your mind. He's using a very powerful mind blast against you. You know that you're outnumbered by a superior enemy, and you must ask quickly if you'll survive this ambush. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I am gonna end it on that one there because I, I, I'm gonna have to run myself a hot bath and just. It's been getting progressively worse all day. It had got better, so I stopped wearing my back support. It's probably stupid. So I'm going to write down 277, which is where we are. There was a decision to make. And we saw it next week with a fight. 
and we start next week with a fight. It, that's if we play this next week. Um, we were thinking of possibly doing something different next week. It depends on Maybe we were. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I am going to have to end the stream there because I'm going to have to just go and get my back sorted out, put on some. I'm going to have a hot bath and put on some um, of the heat rub. And, uh, well, yeah, because you got to be ready for tomorrow afternoon or evening in the, your got, wrong time zone. Yep. And I've got work tomorrow and I've got work on Sunday. So. No reply on the quiz. Um, I'm just old, Stufflegunt. I'm just old. My back. <laughs> You're a young <coughs> one. <coughs> Excuse me. My back, my back goes quite often, but what isn't helping it is the fact that I've got this cough, <coughs> and that's how actually how I pulled my back in the first place. Mm. Yeah. Um, Not one big cough will do it. Well, what it was was I was, I was at work, and <coughs> my my, co <coughs> my cough was really bad one day, and it was actually making me feel ill, making me feel sick. Um, when I, I had a bit of a coughing fit, so I, I dived towards the sink just in case I was ill. I was sick, and as I died, yeah. I twisted. As I died, I twisted, and I felt mm. something, something click in my spine. I was like, "Oh no, that been was not good." Since. Been painful ever since. So, yeah, yeah. Well, have a good night, John. Have a couple brandies. On. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I told you that last week. What is it? Uh, I might just have a drop of that to help me sleep in a bit oh, yeah. you do you do a shot of um ginger brandy one shot warmed seven seconds on high in your microwave wow. i always thought it was bullshit until i did it and it actually does work there's a chest i would imagine yeah it helps your throat and your chest, yes. But no, my, my, I mean, my my back has given me issues for quite a while, on and off. Um, but not, I'm, it's not as bad as my brother's or my dad's. It runs in the family. It's there is a we have de a, a defective spine issues in the family, and mine's probably the best of all the blokes in the family. My brother has hidden spina bifida. My dad's had multiple multiple operations on his back. So, yeah. That's where it goes. That's where it goes. Um, well, um, right, so. so, did anybody say if they were going to run in the morning or not? Well, Jean hasn't been here tonight. Um, There's nothing yeah. there tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it's yeah, just it's, the the it's just the um, the schedule thing on Discord is broken, and I couldn't get it to show anything for March properly. All right. That's what it is. So. We are playing OSE tomorrow, um, starting at 2 p.m. UK time, and then a second session at 7 p.m. UK time. If you fancy playing OSE with us, that's in, in Discord. Um, and I will be running my Call of Cthulhu game on Tuesday in the Discord, starting at <laughs> half seven UK time. So, so what, what time is that? Half seven. You said two and seven? Two and seven, so that's going to be your East Coast. It's nine. Ten. That'll be your nine at nine a.m. Yeah. Our clocks haven't moved yet, so it's ten and three, I think. Okay. All right, then I won't wait. Because <coughs> I've been, as we're doing this, I've been scrabbling to try and find something to run in the morning, but that takes a load off them because I was like, going to spend the rest of the night trying to find something suitable to run so i guess i won't have to worry about that well i mean if, if you can get something prepared and, and be there as a backup because i don't know whether gene's there or not tomorrow all right i'll, I'll work on that i mean it's going to be half ass and you guys got to forgive me now but... oh that's fine that's fine so yeah i'll look into stuff all right well have a good night have a good hot bath Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Take it I'm easy. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Um, right. Anyway, thank you all. Thank you to uh, Daniel and Joker and Iman. Uh, Daniel doesn't have a channel, but both 
Iman and Joker do. Iman's channel is Time's Up 2011. And Iman's channel is Intellectual Quandary. So and they play they play video games. So check them out if you like your video games. Joker, do you I, have anything new up? I do. I have I'm still finishing my Alone in the Dark playthrough. Um and see season one of Killing the Justice League. On the way to get the Joker. Right. And some uh, more wrestling content. I'll have to look at I know I've watched your channel before, I just don't know if I have it saved. So I'll have to look you up again. Yeah. I mean yeah. I have a subscriber, so I'm get I'm guessing they're made subscribers of you lot. But you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think so. <laughs> right, anyway, I have got to uh, uh, go. I've got to get my back sorted out. So uh, cheers all. Um I've yeah. done the I've done the two hours tonight. One hour fifty six. We don't normally go for two hours on a Friday, so that's that's all right. But thank you, chat. Thank you, everybody. Um, see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.